Through the years, I had brides that asked me for toppers that they can save. I had to make one, and I'm just showing you what I did for it. If you like this type of tutorial, feel free to subscribe to my channel. All the links will be posted in the comment box below. I add some vegetable shortening and make sure to knead the fondant well. Then I roll it, and you want to roll this to the same thickness you use for your cakes. You can also use a pasta machine and roll it in the thickest setting. I am using this mold because it looks kind of like a basket weave pattern and I wanted something different. I will post the link in the comment box below for this mold. You want to make sure to press the fondant really really well into the mold and make sure that the pattern is transferred to it. Also make sure that all the borders are clean. As you can see, I'm passing my finger all around it. You can also use a rolling pin for this, but I actually like to use my hands more for this. Pressing is really important. You want the mold to be completely transferred to the fondant. Once you're done making sure everything is well pressed, you want to stretch the mold to make sure it detaches well. As you can see, this is fondant and it comes completely out of the mold and I have used no cornstarch for this. Since the shape of my pot is different, it's not your typical shape, I need to cut this in a different way. And since I'm using a mold, it won't work if I put it directly on the cake just with the shape it has. I decided to measure my cake and divide it in panels. As you can see with the pattern, my top is bigger than the bottom and this way I will cover the cake and have a straight pattern all around it. I place the mold in the fridge so it's harder and easier to work with. It only takes around 5 minutes for it to harden up and you can add some glue in the back of it. I like the gum glue or the corn syrup because it's a little bit more sticky. And you can see that the fact that it's cold, it makes it really easy to work with. If you want, you can mash the pattern all around the cake, but I won't be doing that in here because I have seams that I'm gonna cover with something else. Once you're done, you can take a razor and just cut it. You can do anything to hide the seams. I will be using this mold from Selfcraft Company. You can also use an extruder if you prefer. I will be using some of the same fondant and if you have any problems with your fondant being too soft, you can add some tylos to it. Just roll the fondant and make it thin enough that it fits in the hole and just press. I tend to start on one side and then just push it to the other side to make sure it fits inside the cavity. You don't want anything outside the cavity, make sure everything is pressed well. As you can see, it moves really fast. This is another detail I will be adding to the cake. It works the same way, just make a ball of the fondant and press it down. If you have excess, you can cut it with scissors. Then I use a needle to lift it. You can use a needle tool or just a regular needle. I got some of the pieces here and they are pre-cut. This is my copper luster dust and I am putting some in a little bowl with some lemon extract. I have to be clear, lemon extract is not the same as just lemon, so make sure you're using lemon extract because you need the alcohol content in it so it evaporates and doesn't leave everything sticky. Add enough of the lemon extract to make sure you have a nice consistency and just paint. Use a brush that is not too soft or too hard. You want to make sure it has a nice coverage. You can also use vodka or Everclear if you prefer. Once you have your pieces painted, you can add some glue in the back and attach them to the cake. For covering my seams, I am using one of the lines that you saw in the mold. You can cut it all the way from top to bottom 
and just work less on your cake or you can cut it shorter and add the pieces like I will do on this one. It really depends on how much work you want to put in the cake. I just added some glue on the back of it and place it on the cake. Once I'm done, I tend to retouch the color to make sure everything is even. Once you have covered all the seams, you can decide if you want to add a border or not. I decided to add a border and then add some blossoms on top of it. I will be making a wood board for my cake. Because I like to move fast, I do have a mat that has a wood grain to it that I love to use. Just for fun, instead of coloring this in wood colors, I am going to use the luster dust to finish my cake board. Once you finish painting, you can add your cake to it. This cake can be made as a topper that the bride can save or it can be made as a real cake. You can add as many details as you want or as little. I added some roses, some leaves, blossoms. For all these flowers I have tutorials you can check on my website. Soon I will be adding an advanced section to the website and I will be adding more tutorials to that section. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, visit me in Facebook, Instagram, visit my blog, and share your work with me. Until next time, ta-ta!